this is Tim Bryan. Today, how to protect yourself in the event of a weather emergency or natural disaster. Lawmakers join members of the community for the Saturday morning presentations at the North Hawaii Education and Research Center. It wasn't all hurricane talk. Geologist Don Thomas spoke about earthquakes and how to retrofit your post and pier home to withstand the next big one. We, we have seen in very real terms the difference between a survivor and a casualty is education and knowledge. I tell my students about what I call the tale of two cities. Uh, two cities in developing countries, different developing company, countries, were exposed to volcanic eruptions that were nominally similar. One of those cities had been well trained and well educated on what to do. The other city had not been well educated at all. And they both had about the same level of warning. The city that had been educated, where the residents knew what to do, they suffered about six casualties. The other city that did not know what to do, 23,000 casualties. Virtually the entire city had been wiped out. Every single one could have walked to safety in the time that they had between the initial warning of the disaster and the time the disaster struck. So education is the first step in ensuring that you are a survivor and not a, not a victim. Thomas recounted the damaging 6.7 Kiholo earthquake in 2006. How many of you, by the way, were here in 2006? Okay, you've all been well educated. What are earthquakes? Earthquakes are the release of accumulated elastic stress through ground motion. Basically, we are in a very dynamic geolo geologic environment. Stresses are accumulating all of the time. Periodically, those stresses are released very suddenly and very violently. How do they cause damage? Basically, our homes are designed to rely on gravity to hold together. What happens during an earthquake is that we have forces on a home, on a structure, that are actually as high as those of gravitational forces, except they're going sideways. And when your house is going from zero to 60 miles an hour in three seconds or less, there are some extreme stresses on that structure. And what we need to do and what we can do is modify the home slightly, reinforce certain parts of the home to allow it to actually sustain those stresses much more effectively. And again, you have during an earthquake acceleration and deceleration. The problem is that these happen several times a second. If you imagine taking your home and tilting it on its side and attaching it to the wall, what do you, can you imagine would happen? Nothing good. And so during these acceleration processes, if we can reinforce the structure, we can ensure that the home actually stays in place. For those of you not familiar with the history of the Big Island, and I've, I've actually talked to people who, who have come from California because Hawaii was paradise, and they were very disappointed to find that the earthquake hazard here on the island is about twice as high as any similar sized area in California. We have a very high earthquake hazard. Uh, this is kind of a catalog of some of the events. The one that I always remind people of is sort of, quote, ancient history, but it's part of our geologic history, and that's the 1868 earthquake. There was actually a series of earthquakes at that time, magnitude of 7.9. There was not a single structure in the Ka'u district, a single man-made structure that was left standing after that sequence of earthquakes occurred. It's ancient history, but it's also part of our future. We will have more of these events in the future. We don't know when. I'm sorry, that's way beyond our expertise at this point. But we can guarantee you that we will see earthquakes of a similar magnitude here on the island. 
This is a list, and just to give you an idea of what kind of frequency we're talking about, okay, we have, of course, not a lot of data on many of these early events going back to the 1820s, but what's more important is the number. 24 earthquakes of magnitude six or greater on this island in the last 200 years. That's more than one every 10 years. So we can expect, all of us can expect, over our adult lifetimes to get shaken out of bed several times. And we've developed a map to give a general idea of what the hazards are. And again, the numbers are not particularly important here, but the map shows that the southern part of the island is at the greatest risk. That risk decreases as we move off in onto the older islands where these large earthquakes are considerably less frequent. However, this map is really only relevant to the last 200 years. And it's dominated by that 1868 event. Tomorrow, we could have a larger earthquake up here or over here that would completely change that map. So this isn't by any means the final word. And sort of our best example of you know, how area specific these hazards are, this is a, okay, again, the big island. This is the Kiholo Bay sequence of earthquakes that happened in 2006. Okay, magnitude 6.7 and magnitude 6.0 in very short order. We know that you folks here in Honoka'a felt that event very strongly. I felt it. I was over in Volcano at the time, and I distinctly remember feeling the house shake and continue to shake and continue to shake, and my thought was, oh boy, somebody is <coughs> getting hammered. And as it, was, as it turned out, it was here at Kiholo. It was the largest earthquake we'd had in about 20 years. So if you've only been around 20 years, that doesn't mean that you've seen all of this, this island can produce. This is a, what we call a shake map. And what it is is you can see, and I'll en enlarge this for you a little bit, these numbers here are actually measurements of the acceleration or percent of gravitational force that was measured at these sites. These aren't projected numbers. At the Waimea fire station, they had an acceleration of 1.05 g. In other words, 1.05 times the force of gravity. And again, that's zero to 60 in about three seconds. So we have very intensive shaking. And you can see, of course, that the intensity of the shaking falls off as we move away from the hypocenter. But there's some other information here as well. This is a map of the soil types on the island. It turns out that there is a very large difference in, in the acceleration that your home will experience depending on whether you're on bedrock or on soft soils. The soft soils have a tendency to amplify the force of the earthquake acceleration. This is a map of the homes that were red tagged and yellow tagged. Essentially, red tag means you cannot go back into the house until it's repaired. Yellow tag, essentially red tag says the house is for all intents and purposes destroyed. Yellow tag is it's unsafe for you to inhabit that house. You have to make significant repairs to the home before you can actually occupy it again. And what we see is that the red and yellow tags are concentrated in these areas of the deep soil. Those are the locations where the risk is the greatest to your home. Thomas described in detail a resource designed to help homeowners plan a retrofit by themselves from the comfort of their home computer. So in response to that, a study was done of the, the homes that were damaged in that earthquake and some of my cohorts at the College of Engineering at the university 
working with a um, structural engineering company, designed a series of fixes, of retrofits, that can be installed on homes that will make them better able to resist the forces of earthquakes. This is the type of damage they found. In many cases, the posts danced off of the piers. And some cases completely left the piers entirely. And in this case, half of the house was slab, had a slab. The other half, which you can't see very well, um, was on post and piers. And the two sort of walked apart. And you can see this part of the house was moving. This one tried to stay still. As it turned out, what they found in the study of the damage was that a post and pier home is two and a half times more likely to be red tagged or yellow tagged. In other words, two and a half times more likely to suffer severe damage than a slab on grade. And so what they focused on was retrofits for post and pier type homes. And I've given my, my time going away very quickly. They developed a, a report to give you guidance on what you can do and the retrofits were designed by structural engineers, so they, they basically stand up to the best engineering science that we have today. And they provide a selection of retrofit op options that you can do to your home that are appropriate for a range of home designs. That's the good news. There's a report that's available, and you can find this online. <coughs> they have a table here where you are provided with guidance on the type of retrofit that is appropriate for your home. Uh, and they cover a wide range of homes. That's the good news. The bad news is there are 366 choices here. Something that the average homeowner is not going to do so well with. And in response to that, well, it, in fact, those 366 choices, which of those choices work for your home, is really a function of about a dozen questions and none of these questions are difficult to answer and because of sort of the challenge in being able to access this, this information I teamed up with the computer sciences department and like every sort of lazy professor we got a bunch of students together and a remarkable set of students they were they designed for us what we call an expert system and that expert system will give you guidance if you can answer these questions and put that information into their expert system, and we have this available online, you can get the information that you need on the best retrofit option for your home. It's, as I say, it's available online. I'll give you the link at the end of my presentation. Uh, but it walks you through, with a lot of information, the process of selecting the fix for your home. And again, the questions are very simple. What region? of the state do you live in? If you're living down here, we know that the risk is highest, that the earthquake intensity of earthquake shaking is going to be highest. If you live up here or on Maui or on Oahu, the likelihood of expo it being exposed to this intense shaking is substantially less. And so the, the retrofit schedule is likewise suggested to be less. Uh, other questions, inland, shoreline, shoreline whether you're a single story or two story, the floor area of your home, we actually provide you with, if you can make, get, get out your tape rule and measure the dimensions of the sides of your home, you can put that here and it'll even give you the square footage of your home and put that into this list that you need to fill out. We need to know the maximum post height and the minimum post height. And you can crawl under your house and measure those and put that in. And the guys just blew us all away. Uh, if you're not as spry as you used to be, you can actually take a picture of the longest and the shortest post, upload it to the site, and they have a little tool that will measure it for you. Uh, the engineers were completely blown away by this. We need to know the number of posts, both the interior and exterior posts. And we give you guidance on how to count those sort of what is an interior, what is an exterior post. We need to know the number of girders, whoop, excuse me, and the number of joist lines, and we even tell you which is which. 
So we try to make this as easy for a homeowner as possible to fill this table in. And when you're done, you just hit get recommendations and we will, the, the program, the expert system will recommend as appropriate what the fix is that you need to make on your home. And we have three general classes of, of options that you can pursue. The first, option one, is simply to go in and reinforce the posts and the connections here under the house. And again, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. We provide you with drawings on how to make those retrofits. We give you actually the specifications of the fittings that you need to purchase uh, because uh, um, strong tie, Simpson strong tie has the broadest variety of these uh, uh, mechanical connectors of any manufacturer. We've used them, but you can use any supplier of those of similar type of connections. And we show you how to install the various straps and connections and basically reinforce the posts and the connection of the post to the ground to ensure that everything stays in place during that earthquake shaking. We even provide you with a pick list that you can take down to Home Depot and say, here, I want these. So, and it's appropriate for your home. The number of the fittings, how many pounds of nails, pretty much everything you need. And <clears throat> we provide some imagery to show you how, again, how these things are installed on a structure. Um, again, you can see here, this was a, a test piece that was built to actually test these types of connections. But in some cases, this is the next retrofit, you can actually install what are called shear walls that further reinforce those foundation posts and ensure that they don't break loose and don't tip over. Uh, this is just the backside of one of those shear walls. Again, th these, if you can swing a hammer, you can install these retrofits. Again, just some more photos of, of what you can do. The shear wall installation, we provide similar information. Let me back up. You can either do a plywood shear wall or a masonry shear wall. Of course, the masonry shear wall is going to be significantly more expensive, and we recommend that if you're going to do that, if you don't have experience in doing masonry installations, then you're probably better off getting a, a contractor. And likewise, if these types of retrofits you feel are really beyond your capability, the other thing that you can do with these is once you have the recommendations, you can hand them off to a contractor and get a bid. You can hand them off to three contractors and competitively bid the job and get it done. So you have the option of doing it yourself. You have the option of hiring a contractor. And I, what I like to point out is we're providing you with the drawings on how this should be done. And so you can make sure that the contractor who's doing the job does them according to the engineering specifications. Tim Bryan, Big Island Video News.